At the Democratic State Convention, Wisconsin and I had a chance to interview several potential Democratic candidates for governor in 2018. We never had a chance to catch up with Madison Mayor Paul Sogman, who was there at the convention, so we're very glad Matt, uh, Madison Mayor Paul Sogman came to talk about that potential run for governor. Paul, welcome to Wisconsin. Island. Thank you. Good to uh, be. About 25 days ago, you floated the idea of running for governor. What's been the reaction since then, sir? The reaction's been pretty good. Has it? Uh, in fact, uh, little cards and notes are coming in from not just Madison, but around the state, encouraging me to run. And when I'm talking to people who are uh, outside of government, uh, it, it seems to be uh, very positive. Part of it, uh, I never really seriously considered a race for governor during my career. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Sarah and I enjoy doing is on Friday, Saturday nights, going out of the Madison area and exploring and finding new supper clubs. Well, on a lot of these trips, uh, I've been getting a lot of encouragement from people who think I've done a great job in Madison, why don't you run for governor? And as the months of this year have unfolded and we've gotten this far, uh, Sarah and I started talking about it seriously. Um, well, the State Journal has a quote from you, I think, late last year, saying you weren't interested. What happened? Well, part of it is the outpouring of support okay. and then just kind of raising the question of, uh, it was curiosity uh, in my own mind. How effective would I be as a candidate and as, as a governor in the minds of the people of Wisconsin? So Sarah said to me, uh, you can run, but you have to win. You better <laughs> not lose. Uh -oh. <laughs> so I started thinking about that, and I'm watching what all the other candidates are doing. So I said, there's only one way I know to answer that, and that is to do a poll. So we raised some $25,000 uh, through the Merrill account. And the bottom line is we did a poll. Uh, Paul Maslin, a highly respected Democratic yeah, pollster. Yeah, he's from Madison. And uh, bottom line is it looks very good. It looked better than I had anticipated on the high end. Are you, did that poll put you ahead of the Gronicks and the Vinehouts and the Flynns and the Dwoxes and the McCabes? We, we did not poll any of the other Democratic candidates. We did not poll for a primary. It was oh. head to head against Scott Walker. Okay. Because that's what this is all about. Right. Were you in the 40s? Um, Don't no. you want to talk about those numbers there? Um, let me just say, if the election were held today, mm -hmm. I would be very happy with the results. Really? Beating him? I'd be very happy with the results. Okay, thank you. Um, if you won a primary, what would be your three top issues against Governor Walker? Well, I think it's the fact that statewide, we have to confront crumbling roads, crumbling schools, and a job situation which has Wisconsinites going backwards. So the job creation, employment, and then dealing with our schools and with our roads. Okay. Well, you want to talk about that? Let, let, let's, let's walk those issues out. In a Governor Soglin budget, how would you pay for transportation in those roads, sir? Well, I think some of the Republicans have the answer. We are going to have to do something with the gas tax and now with relatively low fuel prices is the time to do it. Wisconsinites are prepared if that's what it takes. I mean, whether you're in an urban setting or a rural setting, and in a rural setting, folks are actually more dependent upon the roads and their maintenance, uh, having to drive greater distances to get to school, to get to work, to do shopping, get to church, whatever it may be. And so it's, it's very clear. And the, 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 the national ratings in terms of, of, of the roads and the highways make it evident that we've got to do something and we have to do it now if we want to get private sector investment because transportation is critical if you're going to lo locate jobs in a state. How big of a potential bump on the gas tax, which I, hasn't been increased since 2006, but at 31.9 I, I, I would not be able to, to do that at this juncture. I mean. You know, I'm looking at running. 
Uh, I have not, in, in the kind of detail that's necessary to look at the state, the state budget. Now, you mentioned also K-12 schools. Yes. So what would a Governor Sagan budget do for K-12 schools? You mentioned crumbling schools, but there's also the operating money for, for when, schools. When I speak of crumbling schools, I'm, I'm, let's say I'm using that in a broad sense, not just the physical problems for the schools, but the fact that we have to pay for supplies, we have to pay teacher salaries. And we have a situation here in the state where if you're uh, in a community and your school is in jeopardy, you're worried about it at several different levels. You're worried about it because you want your kids to get a good education. We know what that means. But you're also worried about it that your kids will stay in the community and want to have their kids, your grandchildren, going to school. It's a long-term investment. Without a school, a community really doesn't have identity and is not going to be able to be viable in terms of attracting business, attracting good quality jobs. The state of Wisconsin right now is spending more and more of our revenues on state activities and not sharing it with local government. Going back to Bob LaFollet, the whole concept here in Wisconsin was the state was to collect the majority of taxes, eventually through both the sales tax and the income tax, and then redistribute a good share of that money to local school districts, local municipalities. And as the years have gone by, particularly in the last uh, eight or so, what we've seen is more and more of that money retained by the state government, not shared with our municipalities and school districts, and that's why they're hurting so badly. The governor's budget, as you know, recommends an additional $649 million for K-12 schools. Is that enough? Not nearly enough, and, 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 and it's not even a worthy apology for the destruction that was done by the Walker administration over the last half a dozen years. I mean, it's, you know, it's, 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 the guy set the place on fire, and now uh, he's, he's coming with a bucket of water uh, to, to, to put the fire out. As we talk about K-12 funding, a part of it is choice. The choice program, I just looked it up, thir more than 32,000 kids statewide attend private schools. The cost this year, $246 million. What would a Governor Soglin budget do to the choice program, sir? It would probably continue it at the current level, but the vast, vast majority of our kids statewide go to public schools. Mm -hmm. And without that, we don't have uh, a, a future. If we don't take care of our public schools, the majority of the kids, not just the majority, you know, 80, was it 90 percent of the kids, we've got to uh, make the investment. Let me, let me go back again. Schools educate our kids. Schools are the foundation of a community. Schools are what attract businesses to locate. They are, you know, I was saying in the 1970s when I was first elected mayor, there is nothing I can do as a mayor that's as important as what happens in our schools. They define the community. Well, as long as we're talking schools, Wisconsin has the highest achievement gap between black whites in the nation. Do you see that as a responsibility of the governor if you're elected to try to close that gap? It's, the, it's going to be the responsibility of any municipal official, any county official, and any state official, including the governor, to deal with those challenges. And those challenges are not just uh, uh, racial, but they're also geographic within the state. They're also rur rural, urban, mm -hmm. suburban. Mm -hmm. And again, I think there's steps that can be taken. We've done some of these things in Madison to, to, to work with the district and be supportive of the district. The vast majority of a kid's waking hours are not in school. When you look at after school, weekends, and vacations, and now the question is, is what kind of support system is there to provide those extracurricular activities that are so critical to childhood development? You know, I don't think uh, we're going to see a majority of kids on the football team. I don't think we're going to see a majority of kids in band. But those kinds of activities, while not strictly academic, are the ones that give the kids the skill sets 
that makes leaders, that gives the skill set, that, that, that teaches them how to think, how to be independent as they go into their 20s. The third issue you mentioned was jobs. Madison is unique in that it has state government on one end of State Street, and which has grown over your tenure. You first became mayor in 73, and the UW. So some of your critics say, well, Madison has thrived because of state government and the UW. What's, what's your feeling on your, 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 your record on jobs? Let's just take the last six years. Okay. During the last six years, we know how the governor and the legislature has cut back on state government and the university. And yet here in, in Madison and Dane County, and there's different ways of doing the calculations, let's take the most conservative. Under the most conservative calculations, we've created around 30% of all the new jobs in the last six years in the state of Wisconsin. Madison has. Dane Madison, County. Madison, the Madison area, the thank metropolitan you, th area. Thank you for clarifying. The metropolitan area. Okay. We've created at least one third of the new jobs, and I think a case can be made that the number is actually higher. When you look at what's happening, whether it's technology, or whether it's manufacturing, whether it's the food industry, we've done it. And we have done it without the growth in state government, without the growth in, in, in the university. And so uh, it, it just kind of gets me a, a, a little frustrated when the governor starts boasting about Wisconsin's economic success when really most of that success has taken place in the Madison area, not relying on government, not relying on the university, but building a partnership with the private sector. We're the ones who know how to create jobs, and it's a philosophical difference. The governor wants to cut taxes for the wealthy under the false theory, the, 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 the disgraced uh, brown Bet Kansas model, that that's the way you build an economy, and you don't. You do it very carefully, in terms of wisely investing in schools, in roads, in communication. I mean, just now, after he's been in office all these years, the governor is finally, finally talking about how we get high-speed Internet statewide, where here in Madison, we have been working on that despite being shackled by, by the state uh, in, in terms of getting upload and download speeds that are accessible to every kid, every business in, in the community. How do you take the job growth in the Madison area and apply it to Milwaukee, a troubled urban area by all in, in, in dice? All right. One thing where we've been fortunate in, in Madison is that we have had a tax base that, that has allowed us to prudently make certain kinds of investments that bring people here. Mm -hmm. In fact, the last report I just saw from the standpoint of tourism, we are now passing the Dells as the second largest tourist destination in the state of Wisconsin. But it goes back, in effect, to an article I read in the 1970s. And it had to do with how decisions were made by business leaders in terms of where they located their business, and it all had to do with where they wanted to live. So they would look at a community and they would say, are there good public schools? Are there parks and recreation? Are there suppliers to whatever I need? How is the transportation and communication system? Again, what is there recreationally to do? Mm -hmm. Those kinds of activities. You build that kind of place and as the man said years ago, they will come. Do you give, does that mean that state government, if you were governor, would give Milwaukee more cash or more tools to think, create these new jobs? I, th I think you need to do both. Okay. I think you need to do both. Uh, and it goes back to what we talked about earlier, how the state is disproportionately, and, 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 and Mayor Tom Barrett has made this point over and over again as to how the state is keeping more and more of the revenues that it used to share with municipalities. You make a commitment to the Milwaukee Public Schools, just as you would make a commitment to the schools in Lone Rock or, or in Ashland, and you create a place where people want to be. I mean, we've been involved in studying place and, and 
I mean, look at the response you get when folks visit Madison. We, we did some things that were challenging at the time. We put in the State Street Mall. We've focused on bicycling and recreation. We've focused on, on, on making it an interesting, where do people want to be? They want to be where other people are at. It's that simple. And so, uh, and it goes back to where you and I started when I was talking about the supper clubs. What's so great about going out on a Friday, Saturday night to a Wisconsin supper club? Fish fries. Well, go ahead. It's the people. <laughs> yes, you've got to have great fish. Yeah. You've got to have a great steak to get them to come. But would you want to eat in that place and, and, and have, drink that old-fashioned just, your, just by yourself? No. You go in. You walk in. You can tell there's a lot of people who are regulars. But then as you get up to the bar, uh, you start making new friends. It's the people. Let's go to health care. Let, let's go specifically. The governor has just asked the federal government for a waiver that would allow the drug testing and new work re requirements on 140,000 childless adults who get MA, Medicaid in Wisconsin. Now, as you're well aware, one million people get Medicaid health care, get, get, get their health ca health care through Medicaid. So the state budget director says all we're asking is drug testing and imposing work standards on 149,000 childless adults. What's your position on that? Let's, let's start at the beginning. We've got, to this date, too many families, too many individuals without adequate health coverage. That's the first thing. Second thing, whether we talk about the original Affordable Care Act or what's being done by the Trump administration, those, those, much of that debate does not address the cost of health care. Third, in terms of substance abuse, which is where the drug testing is, is coming from, while well, part of it is a, a addiction issue, a lot of it has underlying, uh, underlying causes in terms of people's lives, not being able to support a family on three part-time jobs. Uh, having a kid who didn't get an adequate education and is now in his or her mid-twenties and is floundering uh, and, and on their own experimenting with j drugs. I mean, I know too many parents who have buried their children, uh, whether it was opioids or, or it was heroin. So I just think this whole approach is wrong. Uh, first of all, if we want to get to the underlying issue on, on opioids and heroin, we're going to have to do more than attack it as a drug problem. We've got to attack it as to why do so many people turn to this self-medicating as, as a solution to, to the, their, their lives. Both the House passed and the Senate passed Obamacare repeal and replace would limit Medicaid. It would give the states tough choices on providing Medicaid services. Would a Governor Soglin continue the current level of benefits? Would you raise taxes if your federal aid is diminished? Or how do you see the state's future of caring for one in five Wisconsin residents that get health care through the Medicaid? The state is going to have to partner with the federal government and stop turning its back on the federal resources, even though that may mean more outlays initially by the state because as we go year in and year out into the future, it's going to produce a healthier Wisconsin. It's going to produce uh, better, better outcomes in pregnancy. It's going to result in earlier diagnosis for cancer, heart disease, so that we're then not at a crisis level for the individual and their family. Uh, one of the things that's happened with the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, is it has reduced charitable work by hospitals in this country by over $500 million. That's $500 million that the rest of us would have had to pay for because eventually those hospitals are going to pull it out of somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to look at this in terms of first 
the federal government properly fixing the Affordable Care Act, dealing with the issues as to why some insurance companies do not wish to participate in the system, and one of the things that's needed is leadership from the governor, and I, I can't believe this discussion didn't start four, five, six years ago, leadership from the governor sitting down with the hospitals and the health care providers in this state and saying, regardless of one's view on Medicaid, on what's happening in Washington, what are we going to do to lower the cost of health care in the state of Wisconsin? But a Governor Soglin would not cut Medicaid benefits, correct? I would not cut Medicaid benefits, is certainly the, not. Is the ultimate answer a single payer, a universal, a universal health care system, Paul? I don't know. I think there's two choices. And the present system, whether it's the Obama Affordable Care Act or the Trump Affordable Care Act, is not one of the choices. The choices are either single payer or going directly into partnership with the hospitals to figure out how to get down the cost. People assume that health care costs have to do with competition among insurance companies. No, that's not what drives the cost. The cost is what the insurance companies, the people who insure us, are paying to the hospitals. That's where we have to tackle it. It can be anything from new diagnostic uh, uh, techniques and, and measures, uh, such as uh, Cologuard, instead of invasive uh, procedures. For colon or, cancer. For colon cancer. Or it can be uh, shedding all of these highly advertised, expensive uh, drugs on, on television and a real focus on, on generics, formularies. There are a host of things that can be done. Would you be considering running for governor if Bernie Sanders hadn't won the Wisconsin primary with 56.8% of the vote? Bernie Sanders' participation in the Wisconsin primary sort of opened my eyes. Um, are you a Bernie Sanders Democrat? Yes. Okay. All right, so, so let me, that you asked me earlier about the poll. Yeah. So there's a couple of things we tested in the poll. First, we tested my age. You're 72. 72. Then we tested um, what, what some people would call the negatives. Dane County, tax and spend liberal. Then we tested, gave the key to the city to Fidel Castro. And it didn't hurt. Okay. In fact, in some parts of the state outside of Madison, it actually helped. Um, I've been mayor on and off for over 20 years. Whether you measure it with one poll or one sample or whatever, Madison is considered to be one of the best cities in the U.S. for seniors, what, whatever we're talking about. And there's other cities that have major universities and state capitals. It's not just that. The, the other thing is I've got 20 years experience in the private sector besides my government experience. I've got over 10 years owning and operating my own businesses. I've got a number of years as a chief administrator at one of the largest and most successful companies in the state Epic Systems. Uh, you, you measure that private sector experience against Scott Walker's and it's, it's no contest. Well, but my question is why hasn't your party been able to beat Scott Walker in 2010, 2012, 2014? Well, let's, let's deal first with the recall. The recall strategically was not well handled. Um, it was, it was done uh, based on ideology, and it was ba done based on, uh, on the notion that the state was of one uniform opinion on Act 10. And so uh, it was going to fail. Mary Burke had 
excellent credentials. She got one million votes, but the governor got 1.25. Excuse me for interrupting. And Mary Burke had never really been in a tough race. She had had one campaign with a con contested school board candidate. That was it. Um, when you look at what I've done, I've beat three incumbents. I've gone head to head, beat three incumbents. I've got a lot more experience in terms of managing a government. I've got a lot more experience in regards to really tough races. And I think that that's, that's part of it. You mentioned Act 10. Would your first budget do two things? Number one, would it dial back the additional contributions by public employees for pensions and health care, number one? Number two, would it restore their collective bargaining rights pre-Act 10? No, I don't think we can go there at, at, at the beginning. Let what, me wh wh which, wh which one? Number one? Either of them. Okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me explain. The first thing we have to do and I said this last time I returned to the mayor's office, is we have to fix the finances of the government. That's the first thing. After we fix the finances, then we can start talking about these other things. But right now, there are some fundamental priorities for this state. They are education, and they are the crumbling roads, and, and the challenges of the internet or the lack of internet in, in our cities and in our uh, smaller communities. And these would be your campaign themes. The body of experience that you've just outlined as a public official and in the private sector separates you from the other, you'd have to win a primary, would separate you from the Matt Flynn's, the Andy Gronick's, the Senator Weinhaupt's, the Representative Walks, the Mike McCabe's? 20 years as the mayor of Madison, AAA bond rating, no question about my, my ability to handle public finance. I've taught graduate school courses on the subject. The growth in jobs in the Madison area, the uh, recognition we have in terms of a great place for entrepreneurship. I mean, here's, Look at the Kauffman Foundation. Kauffman Foundation, which is the recognized institution in this country in terms of capitalism and how to build uh, an economy with, with new jobs and new businesses, says Wisconsin is dead last, 50th, in regards to creating new businesses and consequently the new jobs they spin off. Then among the 20 entrepreneurial cities. There's this little gem in the state of Wisconsin, Madison, that is bucking the trend. We can take that spirit and those kinds of strategies statewide. And, and while I'm thinking of other exceptions, look at what Racine has done, look at what La Crosse has done, look at what Madison has done in terms of dealing with chronic homelessness among veterans, with really no program statewide as they have in Minnesota. We've got a couple of cities in the state that are making enormous strides in eliminating chronic homelessness for veterans. We can do that all throughout the state. Just a couple more questions because we're almost out of time. The governor, when asked about running against you, calls you a, a 60s liberal. He'd love to run against you, point one. He's potentially um, going to raise 20, 25, 30 more million we're assuming, dollars. We're assuming 30 million. You're assuming 30 million. How do you raise enough money to compete? And I do want to give you a chance to uh, respond to the governors. You're a 60s liberal. Okay. So first off, uh, again, going back to the Sanders campaign, I think that we can go online and in 10s and 50s and $100 bills raise that kind of money throughout Wisconsin, and we never will get to the 30 million that the governor might raise, but we can get into the 15 to 20 million range, okay. which is what we need to be competitive. Okay. In terms of the name calling, and he's gonna have to do better than that. He's gonna have to figure out 
why Madison, Wisconsin is recognized as one of the best tech centers in the United States. He's got to answer the question, why when it comes to the electronic gaming industry, are we the strongest entrepreneurial center outside of the Silicon Valley area? He's got to answer why in terms of millennials are we one of the most rapidly growing cities in the United States? There's all this stuff happening. The name calling is not going to cut it with the people of Wisconsin. They're brighter than that, and they can tell uh, that, that labels like that are not going to stick. This is the message that you're going to take when you meet with Democrats in La Crosse County, Marathon County, Brown County, Douglas County, right? It is. Have, have, you, have you begun going out and talking to the outstate Democrats who, this, who probably don't know you? This last week, we actually have started uh, responding and we're in the process of scheduling uh, to meet with, with not just Democrats, but Wisconsinites uh, from one end of the state to the other. Um, you look pretty healthy, but you've had some health issues. Is your cardiologist going to let you run for <laughs> governor, Paul? Uh, he says go. He says go. Um, do you have a timeline? Well, we... Because you sound, you're, you're we're, ramping we're, it up here. We're preparing. I mean, if it's a go, you've got to prepare. Uh, like everyone else, the timeline is sometime between July 1st and uh, Labor Day. You, you, you line everything up, you make the decisions. And I would hope to make a decision sometime in and around Labor Day, if not earlier. Um, final question. Your city's changed since you first became mayor in 1973. Um, recently, we've been seeing um, gunshot incidents up to eight in a weekend. Is your city less safe? It's not less safe. I mean, we're looking at other data. We looked at the, the homicide rate basically Five over, the last, over the last 30 years. On a pop per population basis, it's it's no different than it has been. You got to remember, you know, we used to be a city of 170,000. Mm -hmm. We're a city of 250,000 now. Mm -hmm. So so that makes a difference. We are concerned. Uh, the police department is implementing some strategies. Um, I really don't want to tell you what our our chief has decided to do. But is your city less safe? But the city's not less safe. Okay. I mean, the, the, the data shows that. Okay. Madison Mayor Paul Soglin, sounds like the next time Wisconsin and I will be covering you will be a potential announcement. Fair summary? That, that may be. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much for t visiting with us. Sure enough. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, good.